Hello, third graders, Mrs. Fang here. What we're gonna be doing today is we are going to be exploring some magnets and trying to figure out what magnets can do. I'm not even gonna push them together. I'm gonna to just hold it and see what happens. Now I'm going to flip one around to see if it does the same thing. I'm going to set the magnets on the table and I'm going to see what happens when I push against it. What do you see happening to those magnets? Now I'm going to try to flip this one over and see if the same thing happens. Move it over here. Can this magnet ring make this paper clip magnetic? If it does, I can place another mag or another paper clip on here and it will stay. So let's see. There's two. I wonder how many paper clips can I put on there before it doesn't work. We have three, four, five. Let's try the sixth one. Is it gonna work? Five paper clips. I have a piece of cardboard here. Do you think a magnet's pole can pull through cardboard? What are you observing? All right, I have a piece of string attached to a paper clip. Do you think I can make this paper clip float? Let's give it a try. I'm hoping that you had fun playing with those magnets. I'm playing with one right now here. They're so fun to play with. I can tell you I'm an adult and this does not get old to me. Magnets are so weird. What is it that's so unusual about them? Well, I think the biggest thing is that it's because they can pull on things. They're a force, but without touching on anything. That's what's weird. In fact, a magnet's force, as you saw, can go right through a solid object like my hand here. Now think about that. Normally, in almost every other example in your life, if there's a pushing or pulling on something, it's because one object is touching the other object. They're in contact with one another. But magnets, they're weird. They don't need to touch something to pull on it. This is the property, this is the characteristic of magnets, which is their most famous. Magnets can pull on certain things without touching them directly. And, you know, it's actually this fact about magnets which led to their discovery in the first place. Have you ever thought about that? Where do magnets come from? How did we find out about them? The ones you have were made in a factory. But the very first magnets were actually found in nature. Nobody knows exactly when the first magnets were discovered, but let me tell you a good story about them passed on to us from the ancient Greeks who lived here in Europe about 2,000 years ago. Now, in order to make sense of this story, you have to know that the ancient Greeks, well, they wore sandals a lot, and those sandals used nails to keep the top part of the shoe attached to the bottom. You can see some of those nails right here. And the story goes that an ancient Greek farmer went out into the hilly countryside to look for his sheep. But at one spot where there was this patch of bare rock, his shoes kept coming apart. He'd take two steps, and the nails would fall out of his shoes. So he'd fix them, and he'd take another step, and the nails would fall out again. This had him really scratching his head. He's thinking, what is going on here? 
He sat down beside the rocky area and he tried to figure out what was happening. And that's when he noticed that the rocks themselves were pulling the nails out of his shoes. The name of this place was a region of ancient Greece called Magnesia. And the word used to describe something that came from Magnesia was magnetes. And so these strange nail pulling rocks, this is a real picture of one. You can see it's pulling on some paper clips. These rocks came to be called magnetes rocks, or for short, magnets. That's the story of how the first magnets were discovered, and that's how they got their name. Now, this story brings up another really important characteristic of magnets, which is that they don't pull on just anything. They only pull on metal. And it's not all kinds of metal either. They only pull on one kind of metal that you're familiar with. There are lots of different kinds of metals. There's copper, there's gold, there's silver. But magnets only pull on this kind. It's called iron. And they pull on steel as well. But that's because steel is a metal that is mostly made of iron. So of all these common metals, only iron and steel are magnetic. Magnets are only able to pull on iron or steel objects. The nails in that shepherd's shoes from the story, they were made of iron. And paper clips, they're made of iron too, which is why we included them for your experiments. Now, through those experiments, hopefully you discovered some of the other secrets of magnets too. Like this, let me show you something. You know that this paper clip, it's not a magnet. It can be pulled on by a magnet, but it's not a magnet itself. But hopefully you saw when it touches a magnet, now the paper clip acts like a magnet too. And so now the paper clip itself can pull on or attract other paper clips. You can just keep adding them like this. So that's another secret of magnets. When a piece of iron touches a magnet, the iron becomes a magnet itself. We have a word for this. We say that the iron has become magnetized. But here's something you might not have thought to experiment with. Does the iron stay that way once it touches a magnet? Like if we were to pull these magnets here away from the paper clips now, will the paper clips stay magnets? Will they stay magnetized? Another fact you hopefully discovered through your experiments is that a magnet's force is stronger up close. But as you take an iron object and you pull it farther away, you notice that the magnet's force is weaker when you're farther away. So you can kind of just feel this by holding the paper clip close to the magnet and then pulling it away. But a more dramatic way that I can show you this is by using iron filings. That's this stuff. It's iron that's been broken down to be very fine, like a powder. And then I've got a magnet under a clear plastic container here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle the iron powder over the top of the magnet. And this way, we can see where the magnet's force is strongest and weakest. You can actually tell where the magnet is invisibly pulling on the little bits of iron. Isn't that cool? Iron powder lets us do some pretty crazy things that you couldn't otherwise see in class. Like if you mix it with silly putty, you know this stuff? You ever played with silly putty? It's this stretchy, rubbery material. It's kind of like Play-Doh. On its own, silly putty is not magnetic at all. But when iron powder is added to it, well, guess what? You've just made magnetic silly putty. Silly putty that can be pulled toward a magnet. So there's a magnet up here at the top of the screen. Check it out. Whoa, isn't that crazy? The silly putty is now magnetic because of the iron powder in it. It looks so weird. Or here's my personal favorite. This is iron powder mixed with oil. So if you do this, then you've got a magnetic liquid. Whoa, see this stuff? Really crazy and fun. You can pull on it. So those are some fun examples of things you can do with iron powder. Now, it's weird enough that magnets can pull on iron without touching it directly, but there's another great secret of magnets, which I hope you discovered through experimenting, and I've saved this one for last. And that's how magnets act around each other. In other words, what happens when you have two magnets and you bring them together? So hopefully during your experiments, you saw this for yourself. You tried stacking magnets on a pencil. You can stack them like this, and they pull each other. But now instead, if you take that top magnet off of there and you flip it over, 
what did you notice as you bring it down? Now the force is totally different. They're pushing on each other. If you try to shove them together, you can really feel them pushing against each other. Whoa. So it's like they're hovering when they do this, almost as if like magic. See, magnets have two opposite sides, depending on how you have them facing. They either pull each other, or if you flip it over, they push each other. Scientists call these two different sides of a magnet the magnet's poles, but we'll explore that another time. So this kind of hovering could make for some really cool inventions. I'll bet you could come up with some. Now, I'll show you one example to get you thinking, and that's this train in Japan. Instead of having wheels the way an ordinary train does, this train has powerful magnets, and the track itself is a powerful magnet. With the two magnets, the magnet of the train and the track, flipped so that the train hovers above the track. It doesn't hover very high. It might be kind of hard to tell from this photo. So let me show you the view from inside the train, where a passenger has set up some paper clips on the floor of the train. Now watch what happens as the train starts to move. Whoa, isn't that awesome? So hopefully all of this gets you thinking about some useful inventions that could be made.